Okay, so let's take a look at how we could do an optimization problem from start to finish and what some of the key ideas are here when we're looking at completing one. So this question here from lesson three, um, this is here from unit four. Um, we are looking at how to set up the variables and the equations that would go along with this. So the first thing you need to do is when you're reading the question, um, you really need to try to figure out what quantities are trying to be optimized here. So in our very first sentence, it says baskets of cheese and crackers are being prepared for local fare. So that gives us two items that we're actually looking at here. Okay, so that's a kind of an, an important point that we're looking at two items and um, we're not told really much about them. Um, but these are the two items that we're probably going to have to assign a variable for. So if we I'm just going to jump down to part A, it says here, define the variables of this situation. So what we could do is set... Um, X to be equal to the um, number of pieces of cheese and then we'll let Y equal the number of crackers. So as many different as many items that you see in the question is what you need to do in order to figure out the unknown value. So most of these problems here we're optimizing two or three items. So each item should have its own variable. Okay, and then the next sentence says each basket contains at least six pieces of cheese and more than 15 crackers. So that's an important piece of information because it it starts to let us understand how we have to define the restrictions. Okay, so we're looking for something in the problem here where it allows us to define, um, maybe not the restrictions, but define the limits um, to the variables. Okay, so when it says at least six pieces of cheese, what does that actually imply? That, that means that we, we never want to have less than six. We're going to we could have six, we can have seven, we can have eight, but we can't have five. Okay, so that's, that's part of developing the limits for that variables. And it says more than 15 crackers. So more than 15, okay, that's 16, 17, 18, but never 14, okay? So we have to kind of keep that in mind um, as we go along through that. And then it tells us that each piece of cheese costs 14 cents and each cracker costs three cents. So often in these uh, optimization problems here, we have to optimize the cost. So somewhere in the question, they will give you what is the value of each item, okay? So what we're looking at here is we have to develop a cost equation, okay? so that sometimes may be easy to do and sometimes it may be not as straightforward but we we need to keep that in mind that we're looking at developing a cost equation because that's essentially what we're trying to optimize here and then each basket has a maximum price of 212 so what does maximum price of 212 mean okay that means that the cost of this thing cannot be two dollars and thirteen cents or two dollars and fourteen cents it can only go up as high as 212 but it could also be less it could be two dollars and eleven cents it could be two dollars it could be a dollar ninety okay so we've we've defined a, a limit to the, to our cost equation okay so th those are the some of the things that you need to learn how to pick out in the question in order to kind of get yourself going on this and also to kind of understand um, what you need here Okay, this, so if we go down to part B, it says here, determine the restrictions on the variables and then why they exist. Okay, so when it, we talk about a restriction, we're talking about the restriction on the variables that we have just defined. So when we talk about numbers of pieces of cheese or numbers of crackers, okay, what does that imply? Okay, well, this means th these are physical objects, okay, or they're physical things. So what does that actually mean? Well, that means the smallest amount that we could have, um, the smallest amount of cheese or crackers that we could have is equal to zero. Okay, we, we couldn't talk um, about negative values for these quantities. Okay, so when they talk about defining um, uh, re uh, restrictions on the variables, okay, they often will, we can say something like, X and Y have to be a subset or elements of whole numbers. Okay, where so we use E, um, W as elements of whole numbers. Okay, and why is that? Because whole numbers can start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 
and so on, okay? Or we could say x and y are elements of the integer sets, but the restriction is that x has to be greater than zero and y has to be greater than zero, okay? Because integers includes also negative values. So either way to express that is fine. Usually in these questions, if you just want positive values that include zero, you can just say it's whole numbers, okay? Or the set of, of um, numbers from, from W, which is the standard notation for that. Okay, then it says write a system of linear equations to, to represent each constraint. Show your calculations. So the constraints that we're talking about are the ones that were found here in the second sentence. At least six pieces of cheese and more than 15 crackers. Okay, so we take a look at our variable. So we, we, we're talking about cheese in this case here. We define cheese as the x variable above. And we have to have um, at least six pieces of cheese. So the way you express that mathematically is that x has got to be greater than or equal to six. Okay, this means at least six items. Okay, that's how we would express that restriction on that, uh, that constraint for that item. Okay, and then the crackers is our y variable. And we know from the statement there, it says more than 15. So that means y would have to be greater than or equal to 15. Okay, this means, it, it means is really the same as the above. This means at least um, 15 items. Okay, and that's how would we, we, we would organize that. And then it tells us here for number three, the number of items in the basket. So if we go back to our question, it says um, at least six pieces of cheese and more than 15 crackers. And in the very last sentence, it says the maximum price is 212 and can have no more than 24 items. So this no more than 24 items means you have a maximum of 24. Okay, could be less but it cannot exceed 24. So how do you express that constraint? Well, the, <clears throat> the number of items, okay, is referring to both the crackers and the cheese. So we have to sum the two elements together. <clears throat> and then we have to say that we cannot be more than 24, but we could be less. So it's less than or equal to 24. So those are our three equations that develop our constraints on this um, <clears throat> on this question. Okay, so then it says write an objective function that represents the cost of the basket. So the objective function from the lessons, these this is the equation to optimize. Okay, based on our constraints. <clears throat> so the objective functions is just the cost. So we know from um, the, the question above, we can use the letter C for cost, that it costs 14 cents or 0 0.14 times the number of pieces of cheese. That's our cost for the cheese component. And then we're going to add the cost of the crackers, which we know was 3 cents times the number of crackers. Okay, so that is our <clears throat> cost equation that we, we need to find numbers, X and Y, that essentially here, um, usually in these problems, we're minimizing the cost, okay? We want to, because we want to be able to pr make it inexpensively enough, cheap enough so that we can sell it for a higher price and we capture the difference as profit, okay? So this, this is the equation, the cost equation that we're looking at trying to, to figure out what value should we put in there for X and Y <clears throat> that makes our cost, you know, the most, the most profitable here, Okay. So this would be the way that you would, you would look at doing this question. Now, if we, the problem doesn't actually tell us to solve it at this point here, but I'm gonna just take you through the steps of what we would look at when we're trying to do this. <clears throat> so we have our three equations, one, two, and three. Okay, so I like to use a program called desmos.com, which is a graphing tool. So I'm gonna bring it up on my tablet here. Um, you can get this on the web browser. Um, it looks exactly the same. You just go to the website, desmos.com. Um, I'll put the link in the, um, in the message. And what we would do is we would just type in our equations for each one of the things that we have developed, and we just let the, the, uh, the system plot itself. 
Okay, so one of the first equations was x is greater than or equal to 6. Okay, so we know from the earlier work in the, in the unit that this is an inequality where we shade everything greater than 6. And you can see here how it's plotted um, sort of a blue shade. Um, everything and that line is where it's greater than or equal to 6. Okay, our next equation is y is greater than 15. Okay, we now plot that. And this gives us another constraint. Okay, it's another shaded region. Okay, everything above 15 on the y-axis. And then our last equation, we can type it in here exactly as you see it here, x plus y is less than 24. Okay, and then this creates the, the constraint of what are the numbers of things we can have in the basket. Okay, so where these areas overlap, okay, where all those three equations overlap is going to give us the points that we can plug in to that um, equation. Okay, so I'm just gonna sh shift this over a little bit here and then zoom in a little bit. Okay, and we wanna find where all the equations overlap. So that means the green part has to overlap with the, with the, uh, the Y part that's overlapping and then the purple equation Okay, shades another area in. So the part that I'm zooming in right now here, this is the common point where everything overlaps. Okay, and the nice thing about this program is you can take your mouse, okay, and you can usually click on an intersection and it will bring up a point and it tells us here that one of our coordinates here is 615, okay, the one at the top is 618, Okay, and then the one on the side here is 915. Okay, so this region represents the, all the possible combinations where all the constraints overlap or satisfy each other. Okay, and those boundary points equals um, the sort of the maximum limits of what we have. Okay, so if we wanted to go back, so I'm just gonna switch back to my notes here. If we wanted to test to see which which combination would produce, say, the, the smallest amount of costs, okay? We would have to take the points that, o that we found where the region overlaps. So that's 615, 618, and 915, okay? And we would plug each one of those coordinates into X and Y and determine what the cost is at each of those values. Okay, now these values, they represent the extreme of the, of the regions. So if I go back to it, okay, the extreme of the regions, okay, that means this, one of those points is going to produce a maximum cost and then a minimum cost, okay, and then that would be the optimized value that you would be, you would be looking in order to, to find. Okay, so what we did here is we've plotted all those three equations. Okay, and I like to use this, this computer tool because it makes the plotting much more accurate. Okay, and it, and it lets you focus on just looking at the math or the regions. Okay, and we're looking for where everything overlaps as a common point. Okay, so that's this little triangular area there. And the three points that define that, okay, are what we would plug into our cost function and, okay, and then determine what values we get. Okay, so hopefully that is a little bit more of an explanation about how to set up this question. Um, it didn't actually ask us to solve the whole thing here. It just asked you to sort of get us going on it. Okay, but this is the idea of what you're, you're looking to do with these problems. So often you're gonna have two variables at least to optimize, um, sometimes three. Okay, and then there's usually some relation about how they're all related. So you'll have at least three or four equations in most of these questions, plus the objective function that you need to, um, you need to test out. All right, so I'll um, leave it at that. Um, if there are any questions, okay, this is a, you know, a video that you can contact me about, and then we can uh, try to review it again.